Hello my friends and welcome. My name is Dennis and today we're going to speak about why do airplanes stall and why do those airplanes need flaps. It will be a very interesting video, so stay tuned. Before we start, I would like to say that don't take my videos as your guide to aerodynamic laws or to principles of flight. If you want to become a pilot, go to certified flight school with certified instructors that have certified uh, materials for you to understand everything. This video is done just for joy purposes. All right, guys, let's start. I'll draw the airfoil for you and for me also. So here's the wing the classical airfoil and we have some of the pitch let's say this is the big airplane and this is the part of the wing the airfoil we connect the front part with the aft part over here it will be the cord line so here is the cord line and in aerodynamic we use the speed of the air coming into the airfoil to discuss it with you so we are not admitting that we are flying through the air we are admitting here that the air is traveling with the same speed as the airplane flies inside into the air inside the air actually small particles small air particles they hit the wing they hit the airplane so we admit that the air is coming into the wing I hope it's understandable and this angle between the particles actually the airflow and the cord it's called alpha alpha is angle of attack and the more of angle of attack you have on the swing the more of lift force you will have the lift force coefficient to be more precise so here's the angle if you increase it more you'll have more lift but you cannot increase it forever at some point the critical alpha alpha critical the airfoil will be so turbulent over your wing then the particles of the air will not go through your wing they will just separate and fly and they fly like this the turbulent air so they will just separate this air will continue to follow but this air will separate and there is where your airplane where your wing stalls it's time for our toy here the airplane toy I call it the red baron and as you can see it has the very plain wing design it's not the swept wing design it's standard well if I will remove the winglet it will be a rectangular wing and stall doesn't develop all over the wing right away usually in this plain wing design the stall develops usually at the wing root over here and if we talk about the swept wing design it will be more worst case i would like it's uh, like disadvantage of swept wing design because stall develops here near to the wing tips where the ailerons are located so it is much easier to lose the roll controllability on the airplane with a swept wing design after the alpha critical so during your stall you lose of course the controllability for the swept wing design but also it's very dangerous for standard wing design but you will feel then you stall you will feel this kind of vibrations then the airflow start to separate from the wing and also have some of the features for our airplanes like new features and also old features we have alpha wing it detects the airflow uh, the angle of attack actually is the small way way near to the nose of airplane usually or sometimes it may be located at the wing itself and if you enter the stall condition you have also the stall warning inside the cockpit like telling you stall stall or you may have the stick shaker like on Boeing 737 or sometimes even stick pusher if the alpha is too high like for example on ATR 72 or ATR 42 to postpone the stall near to the wing tips on swept wing design uh, usually uh, the designers put the tips a little bit down by reducing the uh, airfoil pitch 
a little bit down so it will stall a little bit later and the ailerons here will be more effective during the stall conditions bum, bum. now it's time for the graph i already drawn the ratio between the lift coefficient uh, lift force coefficient and the alpha alpha you already know it's the angle of attack no need to discuss and here the lift coefficient well let's say it's the mostly wing characteristics a wing curve uh, airfoil airfoil width and other stuff that you don't really need to know well designers of the airplanes of those wings they know what does it mean well later on i'll tell you what may change the lift coefficient the most uh, interesting things that may change the lift coefficient but what we have we have the graph like this usually I may be wrong my friends as I told you so here we have alpha critical critical at this alpha critical we have the maximum lift force coefficient so the maximum lift force itself if you don't remember the lift force formula I'll just draw it here L equals 1 divided by 2 Rho V square coefficient of the lift force, this one, and area of the wing. So basically, the rho we may admit that it's constant, V velocity of it's our let's say true airspeed, and the coefficient, uh, the lift force coefficient, and the surface of the wing we also may change well at this alpha critical as you can see this coefficient is the maximum that means the lift force is maximum that can be generated but after this we have the stall so everything above this condition is the stall condition and we may also go to super stall super stall conditions where the airplane depends on the airplane design but it may go to the spin to the super stall spin and at some of the airplanes you may not go out of these conditions no matter what you do for example like on Tupolev 154 it's a great looking aircraft it's beautiful aircraft and it's widely used even now some of the airlines still fly this airplane especially in ex-soviet union countries well in ukraine we don't fly this aircraft anymore but in russia i think they still fly this airplane well if it enters the super stall condition uh, the t-type of the empennage will be shadowed by the wing the engine will be shadowed by the fuselage so we have the engine surgeon or stall have the engine failure the central engine failure because of the fuselage because of the high pitch let's say and oh, so we will lose one engine and you will lose your control of the empennage you will lose your control of your uh, elevator and stabilizer also will not be effective and this airplane will go to the spin to the super, super stall condition and there is no any way that you can get out from this spin because all of three engines located at the back side of the airplane and they provide excessive uh, weight for that part of the airplane but uh, what you need to get out how you need to get out from this stall condition that you need to put your nose down but your elevator is being shadowed by the wing and there is no any possible way how you can get out from this situation on uh, Tupolev 154 and many of crashes not many but some of the crashes happen because of that that is why pilots there have the instrument that shows the actual angle of attack just in front of the captain it says angle of attack and also have some of the auto warning critical angle of attack critical angle of attack so on that airplane it's very uh, not recommended to go to this kind of areas close to alpha critical as for Boeing 737 we don't have that problem what you need to do if you encounter the stall conditions on Boeing 737 is first you need to hold your control cone firmly then disengage the autopilot disengage the auto throttle then apply nose down 
smoothly by nose down uh, elevator and also the stop trim may be required, pitch down moment may be required to avoid the stall and you put it like this until the stick shaker warning stops. After that roll the wings level, after that advance thrust as needed and only after that retract the speed brakes. If they are out of the stall conditions you may adjust the thrust resume your flight pass and desired flight profile and then you re-engage the auto throttle and autopilot very simple and Boeing 737 doesn't have any kind of you know shadowing of the empennage of the stabilizer and vertical stabilizer so it's very nice control during the these critical angles of attack compared to let's say 2.154. But what you don't need to do on Boeing 747 is you don't need to apply the maximum thrust during your stall recovery maneuver at least for the first time pitch down. And if you apply the maximum thrust just imagine your engines are mounted under the wings so it, you will have pitch up moment. Two powerful engines CFM 56-7B engines, they're very powerful, so we have a lot of pitch moment during your stall recovery and your alpha is already high here and you, you're making it just more higher and you go to the stall with thrust, yes, you'll have the maximum thrust, but no, you'll stall your aircraft in these conditions, so it's better to pitch down and then advance the thrust help with your stab stabilizer trim as well and believe me I used to fly the flight simulators then you put the maximum thrust for, for example for terrain recovery maneuver then you have a uh, resolution from ground proximity warning system terrain terrain pull up there you need to uh, pull the aggressively advance the full thrust the maximum thrust and pitch up to 20 degrees so believe me you pitch down you pull your yoke down because of this high uh, pitch up moment bum, bum. so what may influence our lift coefficient and alpha let's say icing for example you forgot to use the anti-ice system and you have some ice build up on the leaning edge of your wing and you'll have graph like this so this is your critical alpha you'll stall you'll stall much earlier let's say here the critical alpha is 15 degrees but for you because you didn't use the anti-ice system and you have contaminated airfoil contaminated wing the alpha critical let's say critical is uh, 10 degrees and also your lift coefficient drops that is why you need to increase some of the other parameters to maintain the same lift for your flight let's say you may increase the airspeed the more airspeed is required you can also increase your surface by extending the flaps and that may also increase your alpha critical but it's only for approach and landing so basically if you enter severe icing and your anti-ice system is not effective for that conditions you may also increase the engine power so you may increase the airspeed and what will happen if we extend the flaps let's say for landing the graph will be like this so your it depends also on your airplane on particular design the alpha critical may be here or it may be here but usually it's a little bit further than this so we have larger alpha critical usually it's here maybe it's uh, it was 15 degrees but it became like 16 degrees that is why uh, especially for ATR I'm sure it's about that because during the stall recovery maneuver you need to extend your flaps so if you have no flaps, zero flaps configuration and you enter the stall condition you basically need to extend the flaps and add some uh, some power on your ETR 72 or 42 so at least it was like this before then I was flying it four years ago so we have more also uh, greater CL the coefficient of your lift force so that is why we really, we really need flaps to maintain the same lift force 
for your approach and landing so by increasing the wind curve you also uh, increase your uh, lift coefficient and sometimes angle critical angle of attack it means that we can decelerate some of the speed for the same lift and we also increase the surface of the wing by increasing the wing curve with the flap so the surface increased uh, the coefficient increased for the same lift and that is why we may reduce the some of this airspeed because for zero flaps configuration for jet airplanes usually your approach speed will be around 200 knots and say it's zero flaps landing with uh, around 67 tons on Boeing 707 it may be around this well if you extend the flaps for landing for flaps 30 it should shouldn't it should not be more than 150 usually it's 145 around like this uh, I didn't I will not uh, write to you the particular numbers because for particular numbers I need the particular airplane the weight and other stuff well let's say this is for clean configuration without flaps and this is for configuration for landing configuration with flaps at least 30 so that is why we extend this we increase the lift coefficient for that I hope my friends it is understandable my friends I'm not the teacher explaining you this stuff so if you want to be to become a pilot you need to go to professional flight school this information may not be valid and yes I'm not the certified instructor but anyway I used to study in Kirograd Flight Academy here in Ukraine but we had uh, different meanings for this kind of stuff so I also study new things to, uh, describing you everything so all this data you know we have different meanings for that because we have some different schools and different uh, aerodynamics uh, abbreviations etc et but the idea is almost the same so my friends if you like this video you may watch them but usually they do not uh, have so many views as for example simulator videos anyway if you're watching this video it means you are awesome guy and you need to follow the awesome guy checklist as usual first like this video then subscribe to my channel and then yes ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time pam pam